We are just five days away now from a once in a lifetime event. For nearly four minutes, the afternoon sky will go dark Monday as the moon passes between the sun and the earth. Yeah, and if you miss this solar eclipse, check back in about 20 years. Megan Schiller joins us with how NASA scientists are preparing for this, how they're looking to take advantage of the opportunity. Megan. Yeah, NASA scientists, they are pumped. They live and breathe science, so they are thrilled that we are all geeking out over the little rendezvous plan for the sun and the moon this upcoming Monday. Grab those safety glasses. We are all gearing up for a rare showdown in the sky. So we figured why not also snag a rare interview with NASA. Do you know what research NASA is going to be doing leading up to the eclipse and while the eclipse is happening? Yeah, we have all different experiments that will be going on um, during the eclipse, basically. So we have the NASA WB57 high altitude research jet that is going to be flying along the path of totality, taking images of the sun and the solar corona so that we can understand the composition of the corona and really try to understand how it's heated to extreme temperatures. Gina DiBraccio is a pit grad and also deputy director of NASA's Heliophysics Science Division. The other thing that we'll be doing is launching a series of three sounding rockets from our Wallops flight facility. So these sounding rockets will be launched before, during, and after that peak eclipse, and it will be measuring the atmosphere so that we can see how the atmosphere changes as the sun and the energy that it's input into the atmosphere is changing. If you're looking to watch the eclipse with NASA scientists and astronauts in the flesh, hop in the car and head to Cleveland. Actually, the broadcast is taking place there, and there will be a bunch of NASA events um, in Cleveland near the NASA Glenn Research Center, so that wouldn't be too far to travel uh, from Pittsburgh. But the other thing that viewers can do is tune in to the NASA broadcast. So if you visit go.nasa.gov forward slash eclipse 2024, that's where you can go to get information about the eclipse, but also check out the link for the broadcast where we'll be following the eclipse as it enters the U.S. and continues on from Texas all the way up to Maine. And we had to ask, what's the view from space going to look like? It's a different perspective. So when the space station and the astronauts see the eclipses, they're looking down on the Earth and they'll actually be able to see the moon's shadow as it's moving across the surface of the Earth. So when we stand on the surface and we look up in the sky and we see the moon blocking the sun from the space station perspective, they're looking down on the surface of the Earth and they're watching the moon's shadow traverse. And one awesome thing is that as you are at home watching this, you can help to gather research and data about what happens in your neighborhood during the eclipse. They have what they call a participatory project called Soundscapes. You can observe locally what's happening with nature and then report that in, and they'll use that data at NASA to understand the nature changes going on with the eclipse, from the birds going back to their nest early, to the crickets coming out and chirping, to the plants and flowers closing up when the sunlight fades away. Ken? All right, Megan, and we're going to have team coverage Monday of the eclipse. Megan will be out reporting live in Erie, right in the path of totality. Krista Rose will be at the Carnegie Science Center experiencing the eclipse with Pittsburghers. Our coverage begins Monday afternoon at 2 from CBS News, followed by live local coverage beginning at 3.30 on Talk Pittsburgh.